Father, we rejoice, God, in this new year. Father, we pray, God, that you, you pour out of your spirit, God, this year. Bless this church. Bless this family, God, this year. God, increase our vision this year, Lord. In Jesus' name, God, we pray that you inhabit the praises of your people this day. God, we pray that you anoint the praise and the worship this morning. Let it be holy and acceptable and a sweet-smelling savor unto you, God, before you throne. Father, anoint Pastor Bill as he comes and he, uh, and he delivers the word today, God. Uh, let it touch every heart, God, and, and write your word upon the flesh of our heart, Lord, so that in time of temptation, we will not fall away. In Jesus' name, God, we invite you here today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Oh, it's your birthday. Amen. Yes. All right. Do we have any January birthdays this morning? Happy birthday. Dave <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, told us. <laughs> tell everybody to. <laughs> There, you can just stand up there with Brother Bill. You can't hide, Jerry and Billy also have birthdays, so we'll pretend they're here with us. They left town, so they didn't have to stand up here. <laughs>
offer a time, a moment or two, where we just individually, privately ask God, ask God to help us see ourselves as He sees us. And if there's anything in your life that you think even might be displeasing to God, now is the time for you to settle that account between you and the Lord. Father, we come before you reverently, respectfully. You're such an awesome God. And you love us more than any of our English words or our beautiful music can ever portray. Lord, turn on the light of heaven. Shine that light through me. And Lord, if there's anything, anything at all, that stands between you and me, anything that I've placed in importance above you, oh Lord, I ask for forgiveness. Lord, may your mercy now forgive me. Wash me fresh and new in the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. And help me to come together with those of my precious faith now and celebrate all that you did for us before you went to the cross, upon the cross, into the tomb, but then as the resurrected God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless us now, we pray. In your holy name, by faith, we believe it's done. Amen. Well, if you should would come back and serve everyone as quickly as possible, or someone would like to volunteer to help, that would be great. None of us on the platform. Just, just go ahead and take it and, and just share it as rapidly as you can. Are there, are there three vessels? There's only two.
The Bible has taught us adequately. Yes. We're grateful and we're so humble to know that you love us enough. Jesus, you love me enough to let your body be crucified and tortured that my body might have healing. Bless now as I remember and I say to you with all my heart, yes. with all the adoration of my soul, yes, I know I wasn't worthy in my eyes, thank but you. I was worthy in your eyes. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless now the symbol as we take it into our body in remembrance. In the holy name of Jesus yes. Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And then he took the cup. It's important. He took the sip first himself. Then he passed the cup. And he told him, This is the blood. Being raised the way Jesus was raised. He knew the Old Testament covenant. And he knew that God said from the very beginning, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. That's right. We can join the church, but that doesn't save us. We can memorize every word in the Bible, but that doesn't save us. <laughs> Nothing can wash my sin away and remove it but the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that was made on Calvary with me and you in mind. Yes. Let us pray. The blood is the life-giving force. And you willingly gave up the life-giving force, the essence of life. You gave it up, not just to show your power, not just to declare your, 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 your method or your methodology. You did it because this is the covenant, the blood covenant between man and God through Jesus Christ that not only covers the sin, but eliminates the sin. Bless now this symbol as we remember in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let us partake. There are not enough words in our song to be able to say. But you know what? One of the things we can do when we get to heaven is we can begin to sing the songs of the redeemed. Amen. We can begin to declare through the eons, through the millennials. I'm using terms that only relate to our life. There'll be no measurement of time in eternity. But we'll be there able to Thank Jesus face to face. Yes. That he loved me enough to pay the price. Hallelujah. Thank you, church. Praise God. Praise God. Well, thinking about the new year and how many people still make resolutions? <laughs> I don't see very many hands. How many make set goals for your new year? You might want to lose weight like me. You might want to... Uh, read your Bible through. There might be a lot of things you want to accomplish. Get, get within your budget and stay there. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff. But I pulled this old song out called I Am Resolved. And it tells us what we should be focusing on today. So we're going to sing this one. And uh, hopefully it will get your spirit to, to realize what, I, what we need to be focusing on. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
God spoke out to the children of Israel through a prophet named Malachi. But as he began speaking to Malachi, so that Malachi could speak to the people, he told Malachi, before you talk to the people, I want you to talk to the priest. You see, the priest in the day of Malachi had begun to profane the offerings. They had begun to use diseased and sick animals for the sacrifice. They had begun to call evil good and good evil. And they had completely stopped following the example of Levi. You remember Levi? Mm -hmm. The tribe of Levi? They were the ones that God called to be the priesthood and to bring the sacrifices before God. They were the ones who were called to bring the music and the celebration and the worship before God. Now let's turn to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. And my plan is to use the first six verses of that chapter. The prophet said, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his, to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. He's talking about Jesus here. He's talking about that one that would come with the covenant to establish and reestablish the covenant to try and repair what you men have made a mess of. Remember, Jesus came to the temple. And one of the things he did in the temple, that wasn't just a symbolic gesture to show he was angry. That was fulfillment of the prophecies of Malachi to come in and cleanse that place. It was supposed to be the house of prayer and not a place of merchandise, not a place of gimmicks, not a place of entertainment, but a place of dedication and sacrifice and atonement. And he said, this is to begin amongst the children of Israel first. Verse 2, but who may abide the, cup, the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? <coughs> For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. That they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. You see, these priests had defiled themselves. Hold on now. By compromising. By trying to do what was acceptable in the eyes of the people they served. They had lost their focus on their divine calling and they were more interested in what the people would expect of them. Woe unto us ministers today. They compromise just to please people. Yes. I love you and I tell you that as often as I can remember to tell you that. But brother and sister, I couldn't stand here and tell you I love you if I didn't preach the truth to you. The unvarnished. Come on now. That's right. We can't sugarcoat the gospel Amen. and claim to be the salt of the earth. Come on. Hallelujah. Brother, that's a good word. We need to stand before God and we need to make an offering in righteousness. Yes. 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 Notice that the day of cleansing for these delinquent ministers was a day of fire. <coughs> and God explains 
The fire is not there to destroy you. And it's not there to punish you. It's there to refine you. Come on. To make you pure. To make a better version of you before the after the fire than before the fire. Woo! To get rid of the junk. The dross. Glory. Remember, not to destroy you. Not to criticize you. Not to condemn you. But to make you more like Jesus himself. Verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. As in the days of old, and as in the former years. Remember, he's talking to the, 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 the children of Israel now. He's talking to the priest first. And he said, Look, if you'll let God refine you, purify you, then your offerings will be as good as any offering that was ever placed before God. Hey. When God looks on something and God smiles at it and God's delighted in it, that's as good as it gets, church. Amen. That's as good as it gets. In verse 5, he's telling these priests, I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be swift, be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers against the false swearers, against those that oppose the hireling in his wages, the widow, the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. And then verse 6, hold on to this one. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, because of this, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. I'm not going to destroy you, priest, because you messed up. I'm not going to turn you aside and, and eliminate you. I'm the God of purification. I'm the God of rededication. I'm the God that can make you what you need to be if you'll just turn to me. Amen. Look at the list that he gives us up there. He's saying, God is saying, if you'll just come to my purification process, if you'll just come before me, then I'll stand up for you against the wickedness. Mm -hmm. I'll stand up for you against the sorcerers yes. Yes. and the adulterers. I heard a minister say recently that in our society that they don't know the meaning of the word adultery. It's true. It's true. When we think of adultery, we think about adultery between a married man or a married woman going outside of their marriage vows and defiling themselves. But that's not the only thing that the Bible speaks of when it talks about adultery. It speaks about going after strange gods as adultery. It speaks about going over vain janglings as adultery. It speaks about false doctrines as adultery. It does. Because anything that takes you outside of your covenant is adultery. Mm. How about false swearers? First thing that came into my mind when I thought about false swearers is all of these politicians that stand up and they swear that they're going to do this and do that. They're going to defend the Constitution and things like that. Come on. I remember vividly, and several of you in the room know exactly what I'm talking about here. I remember vividly, on two occasions, I stood and raised my hand before God to the United States of America, and I made a pledge that I would stand and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. And I mean it. And I still do. Some of the ways that I have 
to defend today, not with the weapons of warfare the, uh, of this world, but with the weapons of the Spirit, with the words of my mouth, and with the sharing of my love for God, knowing that the only true answer for hope in America is the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Savior and soon coming King. Amen. Amen. And then it goes on to say, I'll not only defend you against this wickedness, I'll defend you against the oppressors. The one that oppresses you in your finances. The one that oppresses you in, in your wages. The one that oppresses the widow. Oppresses the widow. So many ways the structure of our nation makes it hard on widows and orphans. Did you know that? It does. It does. But God says, if you'll just let me refine the priest, if you'll just let me get the priest in line, and then you'll let the priest give a pleasant message to the people, then I, as God, have a defense for all of these people that are oppressed, these widows and these orphans, and these people that are stealing from you. Brother and sister, you, you, you think about the hireling's wages that's mentioned here in this verse. Brother and sister, do you know that... That could be talking about an old-fashioned thing that we take for granted, and that's taxes. Some of us, many of us, are oppressed by the taxes in our country today. Come on, now, church. It's true. And then it says to, that, 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 that the God will, 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 he, he will be there to, to, to stand against those that don't give the stranger his rights. God wants us to have open hearts to those in need around us. Amen. He wants us to minister to them in compassion. He uses the example of the Good Samaritan. That's one example. And there's others of how we are to, to, to understand that in God's eyes, these strangers, these people that don't know Christ, they don't know the message of hope. In God's eyes, they have some rights. And they deserve to be told the truth. And they deserve to see the love of God demonstrated toward them through our hands and through our voices. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. It says, listen, there's a lot of people out there that don't hear me. And I'm going to stand up and do that. Notice in verse 6, and I'm remembering verse 6. He says to Israel, I am God, and I change not. Oh, God is consistent. Yes, yes. Oh, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. With our life, come on, church. I want you to say something with me. I want you to say it out loud. I don't want you just to think it. I want you to say it out loud. God never changes. God never changes. Say it again. God never changes. Hey, how about the next one? Jesus never changes. Jesus never changes. <laughs> the Holy Spirit never changes. The Holy Spirit never changes. Come on now. Hebrews 3, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no such thing as an end to forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I want you to follow me into Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. A lot of verses here. Let's begin the first verse. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, if you will listen and obey. Yes, he's talking to the children of Israel. But yes, it's still a message to you and I. Amen. If you'll listen and obey, I'll set you on high. Amen. Glory. 
Hey, remember who he's talking to. You and I, the believers, his bride, yes. Amen. Amen. the bride of Christ. Yes. We're the adopted ones. Mm -hmm. Amen, and just so you know, just so you remember, we were adopted into the royal family itself. Amen. You don't get any higher in royalty than God Almighty. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. You talk about God running after us. Why is God running after us? He's wanting to deliver his blessings to us. Amen. Come on, can I get a woo or something? Come on, church. He said, all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. Now God speaks to us in so many ways. God speaks to us through his word. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us through his prophets like Malachi. God speaks to us through Sunday school teachers and preachers. And brother and sister, God even speaks to us through each other. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I can't tell you how many times I've come against a problem. A difficulty, a chuckle that some of God's people just happened to have a word to share with me that encouraged me, that gave me hope, that enlightened me to, oh, in the early years of my ministry, I was surrounded by some so many sweet Christian saints that they, 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 would, they, they, would, they would slip up to me after a sermon where nobody else could hear. That's Brother Bill. You stopped too soon in this verse. You should have read a little bit farther down. It's got a little more for you in there, Brother Bill. And I would just be blessed because I hearken unto the voices of God. He says in the next verse, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. We're going to be blessed in the big metropolitan place, and we're going to be blessed right out here in Tober, Texas. Hallelujah. <laughs> blessed, shall, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be the basket and thy store. Blessed sh shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Amen. Brother and sister, there's not a part of our life that's left out of this. Amen. Say, well, he was just talking to the children of Israel and telling them to listen. You know, they had a problem with listening. Is there anybody in this room that has a problem with listening? Come on, church, we all do. We're all weak and we're all laden with the difficulties and trials of life. You couples quit picking on each other. Where's the house of God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are the beloved that he is. <laughs> oh, and he is mine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm asking a question now. Can simple obedience lead to all of these blessings? <laughs> yes. Amen. Remember back earlier when, he, when God was talking to the priest through Malachi? He reminded the priest, look back at Levi. Levi was a man that walked uprightly before me. Levi was a man that went into my temple with pure hands and a clean heart. He's the example you need to follow. Mm -hmm. Oh. Think about it. Levi was obedient to the point that even God spoke about his obedience. God, Job was so obedient that God even spoke to Satan about the obedience of Job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about this. If I'm obedient, everything I touch is going to be blessed. Come on, church. But there's more. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. 
They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. <laughs> They're going to be scrambling for any way to get away from the power of God destined into you. They're going to go anywhere they can go. Over the fence, under the fence. They're going to go around the tree, through the tree. Whatever they have to do to get away from you. So that their blessing, their blessing, your blessing cannot be contaminated. Think about it. They'll come in one way, but they'll go out seven. Woo! Amen. Amen. Thank God. Come on, dig into that church. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, we go around all of our buildings now since we've had all of this stuff. <laughs> well, let's see what Jeremiah had to say, and then I'll go a little farther. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 119 says. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Think about that. They're going to fight against you. Satan is too stupid to stop. You say, you shouldn't call anybody stupid. It's pretty stupid in my book when you get kicked out of the presence of God just because you're full of yourself. I think I have grounds to call this. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail. Say that. Not, not prevail. prevail. Amen. For I am what? With thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Amen. Amen. He didn't say you weren't going to fight and be in a battle. He just said you're not going to be alone. But no matter what the enemy rises up and tries to portray, all you have to do is stand in the completeness of Christ. Your sins washed away. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the honest desire to be all that you can be in Christ. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. It says he's going to command this blessing upon yes, thee. Yes, amen, brother. Now, I, I don't know how far you've gone into this, but every time God said, let there be, it happened. Mm -hmm. And when he commanded the wind and the waves to stop, they stopped. And when he commanded the angel of death to leave a body, it came back to life. Yes, amen. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but there's some places where this sermon would get them shouting and running the house. <laughs> Think about it. God commands these blessings upon you in everything. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee as a holy people unto himself. He hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. There's nothing that will be withheld from you in the areas of victory if you'll walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Why do we make things so complicated? We need to do it God's way, folks. Yeah. Amen. Think about it. If we could figure it out on our own, we wouldn't be in the mess we could get in. Mm -hmm. And the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in thy goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground. And in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt live unto many, and thou shalt not borrow. It says God's good treasure. What are his good treasures for us today? How about grace? Mercy, salvation, healing, protection, yeah. hope. And folks, I can go on and on. 
And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Come on now. We got to get away from this stuff. Of poor me. Mm -hmm. We got to get away from this spirit of infirmity. Amen. Come on. Yes. Sister Virgie yes. said it as good as anybody ever could. We're somebody going somewhere. Amen. We've been made somebody by the blood of the Lamb and the residency of the Holy Ghost from within us. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be above only. Thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt go not aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Many voices are speaking us, speaking to us today about change. We need to change how we do this. We need to change how we do that. We need to change how we elect. We need to change how we pay. We need to change how we how we view one another. In Proverbs 24, 21, God speaks to us and he says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. And the king he's talking about here is the earthly king. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Brother, sister, we don't need to change on the road. We just need to put it back in the fire. Amen. Amen. Refinement. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our God doesn't change. Now, folks, when we're thinking about change, don't get lost in earthly thinking about politics or property or sports or taxes or all those things that all these voices are talking about when it comes to change. The fact is, the world we live in changes every day. I just want you to focus this morning on the fact that our God is an unchanging God. His love is the same. It's always the same. His mercy and grace are always the same. So now we need to make a choice. Will I pattern my life after an ever-changing world? By the way, a world that doesn't love you. Or will I pattern my life after loving, caring, giving, protecting, filling? No. I'm going to close the message today with an invitation. And I've written these down because as the Lord gave them to me, I felt like He wanted me to write them down. I invite you to call on Jesus and ask for forgiveness of any sin. I also invite you to rekindle the fire that's already in you. It's already in you. I invite you to ask for divine guidance to help you reach the lost and the dying while we still have time. Yes. And I invite you to step one step closer to God. Just a step. We're going to open the altars. I know that physically some of you can't come and kneel down at the altars. I understand that. Don't let anything trouble you. But as the leader of this church, I was brought up under a man of God who taught me how to be a pastor. Brother J.W. Pruitt. And he taught me as God.
goes the pastor, so goes the church. And so I'm going to invite you today to find a place in the sanctuary. And no matter which one of these covers you, you say, Brother Bill, you didn't cover everything. I covered the things the Holy Spirit told me to cover. So now, I invite you, sermon number one, 2024. No theme, no subject, no title. Join your pastor at the altar today.
each and every one as we go our own ways today, Lord. Amen.